Good evening, friends. Welcome to the shop. We'll talk a little bit about pressure sensors, um, how the Holly is able to read those through the analog to digital converter, and the effect of using a pressure sensor outside the normal range of your um, of what you're trying to measure. So if you're trying to measure something that's never more than 100 pounds and you use a 500 pound sensor to check that, um, what the effect would be. And you know just how, how much does it skew everything so we'll we'll look at how it works and a little bit of simple math and then we'll we'll have some numbers that can show you how everything's going so the first thing to note is that you know the holly computer system it thinks in ones and zeros doesn't really um, you know computers don't process analog information directly and this is an analog device it outputs a a voltage which is linear to the pressure. Low pressure, low voltage, higher the pressure goes, the higher the voltage is. And these run from 0.5 to 4.5 volts. So the Holly has in in the computer a, a series of analog to digital converters, they're called. And they look at the uh, voltage value of this over a period of time and kind of average it and then they give a digital number to the reading it got and that digital number is what's processed um, by the computer and it, re and it repeats this over and over many 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 times per second um, so you don't really notice that the data is more like a stair step than it is a uh, you know like a sine wave and that's the difference between digital and analog. Um, not not going to try to get into too much of the, that bullshit because it just makes the conversation complicated. We're going to keep it simple. Um, Holly does not publish the um, the bit rate or size on their ADC. I did a little bench testing, and as near as I can calculate, it works out to uh, somewhere around a 10 bit. ADC. And what does that mean? So that means that um, it's 2 to the power of 10 or 1,024 pieces or divisions we'll call it. Um, that means on this 0 to 5 volt signal 0 volts would be the number 0 and 5 volts would be the number 1,024. Actually 1,023 because you lose a digit for 0. And in my testing I determined you know, through noise losses and whatnot, <coughs> um, it's right at a thousand. Is what we found um, on the bench here. It, it operates right at a thousand uh, points for for that sensor. So, knowing that, we can go over here and we can make some assumptions. Let's say that we want to measure um, our engine oil pressure, and engine oil pressure is normally about uh, let's say 70 psi. And of course, a reasonable person would pick a 100-pound sensor for that. Um, with that 100-pound sensor and 1,000 divisions, then that gives you, you know, 0.1 increments, right, for pressure. So during a run, this particular sensor would report 70 pounds of pressure, right? And then say the pressure starts to increase, it would then report... 70.1, 70.2, 70.3, right? That's how it would work. What if we used a 200 pound sensor instead of a 100? All right, well again, you just move the, the decimal point over. And so now we have an engine that will report 70 pounds of pressure. And if the pressure increases, it will report 70.2. 70.4, 70.6, and so forth, all the way to 200. This one's going to stop at 100. The number of the divisions is the same. It's 1,000 divisions from 0 to 200. But the value of each increment is obviously higher on this one. We're going to do in 2-pound increments, 0.2-pound increments <coughs> here, and 0.1-pound increments for this one. What if we use a 500 pound sensor? Well, now we're going to be in 0.5 increments, right? And this is again with the Holly system. So we'd be at 70.0, 70.1, 70.2, 70.3, 70.4, 70.5, 70.6, 70.7, 70.8, 70.9, 70.10, 70.11, 70.12, 70.13, 70.14, 70.15, 70.16,
so forth all the way to 500 because it has farther to go it has to make a bigger jump between each uh, the value is bigger between each division it's pretty pretty straightforward but what I want people to think about is you know do you really care if your engine oil pressure is 70.2 or 70.3 or 70.4 do you need that 0.3 in the middle here Right? Or are you happy just knowing it was either 0.2 or 0.4? Most people would be happy with that. And e even half pound increments, most people would be happy with. If they knew their oil pressure within a half a pound, they'd be satisfied that you know, they have oil pressure. So the reason I bring that up is because <clears throat> it's a, it's, you're always an advantage to use as many of the same thing as you can on your vehicle. It's less spares to carry around. If you're having troubles, you can swap one sensor for the other, try to figure out what's going on that way, and not have to buy any extra parts. So I would encourage people to use a 200-pound sensor you know, for their oil and their fuel. A lot of fuel systems are over 100 pounds, so you couldn't use 100. So you have guys that get 100 for the oil pressure, 200 for the fuel pressure. I'm saying just use 200 for both. In fact, you can use it for dome pressure. You can use it for a back pressure monitor if you have a turbo application. So that sensor is really helpful and can be used in a lot of places on the car. You could technically do a 500 pound sensor. I don't think I could get very many people to buy it because they wouldn't think that that's enough accuracy. But in fact, it is enough accuracy for most of what we're doing. The same thing goes on your map sensor. You have guys that you know, they want to they buy a three bar map sensor um, instead of a five bar and then later you know, they, they turn the power up a little bit, now they, their map sensor doesn't go as high as the boost does. They have to turn around and buy a five bar. Let's go ahead and get you a five bar right out the box, you know. And uh, you want to run pan back? Use a five bar for that too. All right. Those five bar <coughs> is 500 kPa. So that means you're going to go in one half of one kPa increments. So let's say it's uh, we're looking at pan back. All right. And we used a five bar. That five bar is going to be able to report a pan back of 60, 60.5, 60, oh shoot, 61, and 61.5. And it's going to report the same thing every time if the conditions are the same. So the repeatability is what matters more so than in actual numbers, the fact that it repeat every time. And then on your map, you're going to have the same thing. You know, you get into boost, you have a 130 kPa, right? And a little bit more pressure, you got a 130.5 and a 131. And it's just, I don't see the point in trying to pin down uh, the map sensor to the exact boost you plan on running. It's just a five bar covers most everything. And once you get over 60 pounds of boost, I think it is. Maybe you want to consider a 7 or a 10, but for most of us, a 5 bar is adequate for anything we're doing. So hopefully that explains some things, and uh, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments. I'll try to address those as I'm able. Have a good night. Thanks.